Um, in much the same way that, oh, it's all over there. In much the same way that when we were finding points, right, we just had to kind of put some values in, see what happened, okay? I kind of have to do the same thing for this graph for certain points, okay? But thankfully, it's not, it's not impossible, right? For instance, we know that the square root of zero is zero. So anywhere where my original graph has a y value of zero, I will still be zero. And there's exactly one spot. Where is that? Um, on the, the x-axis and specifically at x equals yeah. one is what we found out, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is on my graph, I'm gonna put like a big fat, and if you've got other colors here, it does help because you can see how much stuff goes on here, right? Okay, I've got that bit. There was another spot that I knew that the square root of that number gives me back that number itself. One, one very good, so that's here. I'm destroying my marker, that's fine, that's okay. All right, so I know I go through those two points and then I just have to think about this logic in here, right? So I know that um, when I've got values greater than one, values like four and nine and 16, when you take a square root, you end up smaller, okay? So let's have a look, where do you see those? Um, see all of these values here? They're greater than one, they're between one and two, right? So therefore, as you take the square root, you'll be just below this section of the graph. Now, see how this is asymptotic behavior? It's going towards two. Mm -hmm. Now what we're saying is, you're going to approach, like this is y equals the square root of f of x, right? Mm -hmm. So over here, you're getting values closer and closer to two underneath that square root. So instead of approaching two, you're gonna approach what? Away from what? Um, the what value? What value? Oh. Have a think. That was... This is two. Mm. And I, I'm just taking the square root, right? Yeah. So if, for example, you actually... Do um, you have your calculator there? Somewhere? Yeah. That's fine. That's okay. Um, if you put some values in, like x equals negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, you're going to get this whole thing be closer to two because this thing takes over. Then, to the whole thing, you apply a square root over the whole thing, right? So you're gonna get very close to the square root of two. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Like if f of x, in fact, why don't we write some notation under this, because it'll help, right? I'm gonna borrow some um, uh, notation from like last year, okay? So if I said the limit of f of x as x goes, further and further towards um, negative infinity, okay? I already know what that's equal to, it's two, because that's what that asymptote tells me, okay? So now, if I say the limit, uh, as x approaches that same, it's going to the left, okay? Now I'm not gonna look at the function, I'm gonna look at the square root of the function. Well, if you took the square root of this side, you just take the square root of the other side. Does that make sense? Because you're actually just going to put in numbers that are closer and closer to two, and you'll take the square root of those numbers. So um, square root of two, do you know what that's equal to? 1.7. It's closer to 1.4. You're thinking of square root of three, which is also, also comes up a lot because of trig, like root three and two, all that. Anyway, square root of two, it's about 1.4. So let's go ahead. You can see why it's so important to have like a good graph. Uh, if that's one and that's two, 1.4 is going to be like there-ish, right? Like so, okay, so it's a bit lower. And because horizontal asymptotes tend to do this thing on both sides, I'm actually gonna extend it over there and we'll see why in a minute. So what I've got is I am gonna approach this asymptote from underneath just like I had before, okay? Now, this part here is weird. We were talking about this before. When you've got y values or f of x values that are little, when you take the square root, they get higher. So you see how this little section in here is below, mm -hmm. this section here is gonna be above, which is weird, <laughs> but I'm gonna start here. I've gotta be above in this section, but then I've gotta come back down to, you told me the square root of this value intersects with itself, right? What kind of shape would that look like? Round. <laughs> round, yeah, yeah, it's round, right? It starts here, ends here, but I've gotta be above. That's really badly done, but it's hand drawn. So I think like you've got the rough idea here. Can you see it's kind of like a steeper version here and then a shallower version here. In fact, if I did this again, I would rub this out and I would do one clean line that just goes through, okay? 
All right, now what happens past here? What does, what happens when I take the square root of this? <laughs> the graph stops existing, at least it does in the real numbers, right? Um, if we were talking about complex numbers, which we're not, um, those answers do exist, but this is a real number and this is a real number. So we just say that the square root of that function just stops right there. No problem. Okay. All right, now, lastly, what happens over here? Okay, now, you, what you want to do here is you actually want to get a, a decent sense of what's going on. So remember I said, like, you're going to need some values, right? Um, often when you get given a question like this in, say, the HSC, they'll even provide you a grid so you can do this with some scale and accuracy. Um, but say, for example, if I put in a value like, I'm thinking of one that would work. Um, if I put in a value like 4, I'm choosing 4, I'm going to rub off this because I don't need it. If I chose a value like 4, I'm choosing it because it gives me really easy numbers. So I go f of 4, what's that equal to? Can you help me out? Yeah, because you go 2 over this, this is just going to be 2 divided by 2, which is 1, and then you added that 2, so that's why it gives you 3. Okay. So I know, the reason why I've picked this is because I can say, alright, there's 2, here's, I've got x equals 4, so it's going to be there, right? So this value up here actually should be lower down, my graph's not that accurate. Um, so in fact, let's just redraw it, there's no reason why not. Okay. So let's just make that a little more accurate, like there that looks like about three to me you okay with that okay so now this is a bit more accurate of a shape like so this is the original function but now when i take the square root it's not going to be three it's going to be the square root of three that's the 1.7 you were telling me about before right so therefore where's 1.7 it's going to be somewhere around here right and then just like this approaches root two i didn't label that which is a bit cheeky just as this approaches root two from the bottom this side's going to approach root 2 from the top, okay? So if I place that 1.7 around there or so, so I'm going to get a very similar shape on this side. But it'll always be, can you see it's always beneath? Why is it, all, why is it always beneath? Because it's above 1. Very good. Values above 1, when you take their square root, they always get smaller always smaller um, every square root value that you test out. If you test it out a bunch, you wouldn't just get 3 in root 3. You get like 4 in root 4 and then 5 in root 5 always underneath. Okay. That's pretty much it. Now, how do you feel about that process? Were there any bits of it that were unclear to you or didn't make sense? No, that was... I get that. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that the second part says why Word. Yes, fantastic. Is that just reflecting the graph? Oh, that's a great question. So, whoopsie daisy. Um, we've just done the hard part. This next part is actually the easy bit. So, y squared equals f of x, right? If you had, if I ha gave to you, uh, let's just forget about this for a minute. Let's just, if I gave you numbers, right? If I said I had some number a, and when you square it, you get 16. What can you tell me about a? Mm -hmm. Because there's two values that satisfy it. Right? So what this is telling us is, same deal, there's two values that satisfy this, right? They're both going to be this same magnitude, but you get the plus and the minus, right? So it's really, it's going to look weird, but we're going to do it. Um, the minus part looks exactly like this, but upside down, right? So it's going to, well, I guess it's going to look like that. It'll approach, I'll have another asymptote down here. And then what about this one? Well, it's going to be mirrored across this way, right? So I guess it looks something like that. Is that all right? Yeah. So there's the plus part of it, and here's the minus part of it, and that's all there is to it. Okay? Oh. Um, this, by the way, is why I saw you had some before. This is why if I gave you this, this is the reason why it's a parabola, but the other way, right? Because it's really saying, hey, it's just plus or minus the square root of x. What does the square root of x look like? There's the square root of x, and here's negative the square root of x. There's your sideways parabola, right? One part is made of the minus, the other part is made of the plus. That's it, okay? That makes sense. How are you feeling, Doris? Is that okay? Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's just, before you go, let's just review, right? Because we just did a lot, right? What I would suggest is whenever you get one of these questions where they give you an original function and you need to do some kind of um, 
function to the function, like taking the square root, right? The first piece of the puzzle has to be, you've got to get the original function and graph that really well. If I didn't have a good graph of it, I'm stuffed. Like you saw how constantly I was just going back to the diagram and saying, oh look, it's above, it's a below. That's your main instrument. That's the first thing. The second thing is you're gonna look for the normal features that you look for. Um, it's a bit sneaky though, for the square root, I just know, because I've done them, <laughs> thousands of these questions, that this is an important value for square roots, right? And so that's why when I draw, I'm, I'm looking for those. Just by chance, suppose I didn't get this, right? You remember when we were looking for this intercept and we we're like, oh, it's one, how convenient. Yeah. Might not be one, of course, right? Maybe the intercept was something like three. Well, somewhere else, the graph will probably intersect with one. And so you need to find that. So in just the same way as right here, remember we found the y-intercept and we said, sorry, the x-intercept, we said let y equal zero. If you don't know where y equals one, like that hasn't come out in some other part of the process, you gotta find it. You, you, you need to know where that point is because it's important to the shape of your graph. Um, and then after that, uh, look to see what the square root does and where it takes you. Okay. Um, in the HSC, would you draw the original graph as well? Or do you draw um, the short answer is yes. Um, you know, often a, a question will give you quite specific guidance and they will say, they will even say, draw both f of x and the square root of f, f, f of x on the same graph because they're actually looking for you to do the process I just described. Like, look at the feature and say, oh, ooh, look, there's the point of intersection, right? Um, the question will guide you in the very unusual situation where they might say, just, just graph the square root of it and I don't want to see the rest of it. Um, I would draw the original graph in pencil and then I'd do all of this in pen. You know how in the HSE they scan and all that kind of thing. And then I would rub out the original graph, okay? Because then you can cleanly see the real graph that they want. However, I mean, here's a, here's a little bit of insight that I can give you, right? Uh, what the HSC is trying to do, what the markers are trying to do is understand if you understand, um, which is weird, right? They, they need to actually see the process that you went through. It's why working is so important in all kinds of questions, not just graphing. So I would find it highly unusual if they specifically asked you draw, draw one and not the other. They know that the main way to do the square root is to do the original thing. So they ask you to put them both on one graph.